Welcome to Flourish in Five. My name is Heather Lottonen, and every Friday I share a story, a lesson, or a quick idea with the goal of helping you gain a new perspective. I really appreciate all the comments you are leaving on the YouTube channel. Please keep them coming and share this episode with your friends. As I've mentioned in the past, my parents live with us, so I spend a lot of time with them. And a few weeks ago, my mom and I were in the kitchen, and she said, You know what? I am so proud of your equanimity lately. <laughs> I said, um, okay, just give me a second to go look up that word and make sure it means what I think it means, but I'm pretty sure that's a compliment. So thank you. Now I, again, I kind of know what that <laughs> word means, but I wanted to make sure. So equanimity is mental calmness or composure, evenness and temper, especially in difficult situations. So um, it's just an overall well-being of calmness. And I've learned about this through my meditation with the app 10% Happier, which my mom has also used. So we're kind of speaking the same language, except she is pretty much a walking thesaurus, uses a lot of big words that I oftentimes have to look up. But I was wondering what she was referring to in a couple of different situations, but we recently had our fall festival, our bring your own pumpkin party carving contest. I mentioned that in the previous flourish in five, and it's such a big event for us that in the past, it is possible <laughs> that I have been known to be a little bit extreme in my behaviors in terms of stress, feeling very stressed out leading up to the event. Um, worrying about every single detail, maybe wondering if this was going to go right. What about the weather? Things I can't control. Do people enjoy this? Do they not? Is it fun? Is it stupid? We have all of the stuff to do just a million things. And I would get really, really stressed about it. Well, in the past few years with my work in meditation and with my therapist, I'm exploring the reasons why certain things trigger me or why why I have certain behaviors. And I wouldn't label myself as an overthinker because this is not about overthinking. This is about exploring what drives behaviors so that I can better understand them. <laughs> By the way, maybe that is overthinking because I did ask my therapist, am I overthinking why I need to be overthinking about something or why I need to explore something? I know that, that sounds kind of turned upside down, but I'm, it's not that I'm overthinking my behaviors. I'm trying to understand why I behave in certain ways so that I can do better. So this year I was really calm, cool, collected, very apparently equanimous. I'm not sure if that's a word with our pumpkin party. And I'm trying to understand why or what I've done to get to this point. So if you have something that triggers you and it's not pleasant and it involves anxiety or stress and you want to work on it, this might be something you want to explore. You might want to ask yourself, like, what is it specifically that is troubling me? Okay. I am in the past. I can look back and say, I was stressed about the pumpkin party or, or anything that you're, any event that you're having, you're having people over. I'm stressed about it because I'm worried that I won't get everything done. Okay. Well, let's go deeper with that. What if everything does not get done? Like follow that train of thought. What is the worst that can happen? What if all of the decorations don't get put out exactly the way I want? What will happen as a result of that? Oh, pretty much absolutely nothing. Well, but in my brain, when I'm not consciously thinking about that, the truth is what will happen if all the decor is not properly placed is that people won't like the party. They won't have fun. They won't like me. They'll judge me. Like it goes down this crazy spiral. You, oh my gosh, please tell me I'm not alone. I can't be alone in this. It's just, we're not aware of it because consciously, as I say that, like logically, of course, that does not make any sense. No one is going to hate you because you didn't put the Indian corn in the right place. Of course, that's stupid, but that's just not the way our brain works when we are not shining a light in the darkness. When it is staying in your mind, jumbled up, it's never going to make any sense. Okay. So if I don't get everything done appropriately, then people aren't going to like me. Okay. Well, that's silly. So now I recognize that that's not the case. Nobody cares about the decor. Okay. If I don't get everything done, it's because I didn't plan properly. And therefore, uh, you know, what's the story I'm telling myself that I'm a loser or more importantly, that I don't trust myself. I think there was a big component here of I didn't trust myself to get everything done. By the way, I had no reason not to trust myself. <laughs> 25 years of hosting this party, and it has always been perfectly fine. There's never been an issue. 
But I think we just lean towards the negative aspects of what we're worried about. Of course, negativity and worry go together. But I, I guess I just felt like maybe I didn't trust myself to get everything done. And then if I didn't get everything done, what would that say about me? I would look like I wasn't prepared. If I wasn't prepared and it didn't get done, people wouldn't like me because I'm a loser. They would hate my party. I mean, right. It just all goes down the same shame spiral. It's just that now I'm catching it and I'm catching it sooner. So I ask myself really important questions. I encourage you to do the same. When something is stressing you out, ask yourself, what is the real issue here? Because the issue is not about the food being prepped perfectly or the decor being right. That is not the real issue. That is the symptom that is putting you into a stress, anxiety producing moment. But that is not the real issue. What is the real issue? And you go deeper, like with yourself. What's the real issue here? Well, I'm worried what people will think, or they won't like the party, or they won't think I have it all together. And so that all comes back to I'm worried about the judgment that comes back on me, or that I don't trust myself to get it all done. So I walk around now saying things like, I trust myself. I trust myself to take care of everything that needs to be taken care of. I have copious amounts of lists. I have a binder for that party that is branded with the BYOP logo that we came up with, a friend of mine did years ago that has step-by-step literally everything I need to do so that I don't miss anything. So I can clearly trust myself. It doesn't matter if the decor doesn't get done because people will still like us, you know, as a family and coming to our homestead, like none of it made any sense, but because I wasn't exploring it. So again, some people might equate this to overthinking, but I don't. This to me is exploring what is driving behaviors. Once you can pinpoint the origin or what the real issue is, then you can work with it. You can, again, shine the light in the dark and say, okay, well, that's not really an issue. That was just something that was kind of made up in my head and then went down into the shame spiral. And as a result of this work, and by the way, this does not happen like with the snap of your fingers in a moment, you don't hear this. And all of a sudden everything magically changes. This has been years of doing this work, years of reading the books and therapy and meditation and exploring my own neuroses to understand what is driving behavior and then what type of behavior I want. So before my mom introduced me to these big fancy words, I didn't know what I was looking for was equanimity. Just in general, in life, wouldn't it feel better if you had mental calmness, if you felt composed or that you were just even and you didn't have maybe extreme emotional reactions that were inappropriate to situations. Like why would somebody have stress and anxiety over a pumpkin carving party? Yet I did, but I just didn't understand it until I started to explore it. So again, the message here is maybe it would be helpful to start to explore why, why you have certain behaviors or why certain things trigger you. And then ask yourself, what's the real issue? And is that really an issue? Or is that something you're making up in your head? And then how can you work with that? I hope that you found this useful. I'll see you in the next episode.